it up next. This is Channel 2 News at 6. Good evening. New York City is getting a new top cop. Mayor-elect Rudy Giuliani has named a new police commissioner. He is William Bratton, 46 years old, currently the police commissioner in Boston, where he was born. But he's no stranger to New York. Bratton was the transit police chief here from 1990 to 92, and he won rave reviews for reducing subway crime. More now on why the mayor-elect picked Bratton. Channel 2 is live at police headquarters in Manhattan. Here's John Slattery. Thanks, Tony. It's uh, an announcement that came after days of speculation, but uh, surprised practically no one. William Bratton landing a very big police job, and uh, it's a time that he's coming to New York for the second time. This is a really uh, important moment for the police department, but also uh, for the people of the city. Bratton was born in Boston, but he won the hearts of transit police in New York during his short tenure at that department. I spent 22 of the best months of my life in this city working with 4,000 of the best cops I know in America. And now I'm going to be privileged to lead 30,000 more. Bratton replaces Raymond Kelly, who became commissioner only 13 months ago. This was a difficult choice. It was a difficult choice because I have great respect uh, for Commissioner Kelly and great respect for what he's done for the police department throughout his career. Kelly, who is a lawyer and a career cop, who recently was considered for a top job in the FBI, said he realizes the mayor-elect wanted his own man. I, I think the fact that I had been in the job and, in my view, have been doing a reasonably good job, and the fact that there was this, uh, this delay or this process that was put in place and it was extended, I think handwriting was kind of on the wall that, uh, that it wasn't uh, going to be me. Giuliani indicated it wasn't just having his own man. He said the department periodically needs change. Institutions that remain uh, the same tend to deteriorate no matter who is left on top of them. Change is an important part of government and of life. And uh, that was really the deciding factor. And in hoping to make a change, Bratton hit the ground running with tough talk. We will fight for every house in this city. We will fight for every street. We will fight for every borough. And we will win. William Bratton certainly has a can-do attitude, and he predicts big reductions in crime. Uh, Commissioner Kelly said of Bratton, he's, quote, a, he is a, a, a good man. He will do his best. But he said ever since crack, he's not sure that there's a magic answer to reducing crime. Channel 2 News is live in Manhattan. I'm John Slattery. Thanks, John. Sources say a federal grand jury is now investigating a gang of a dozen New York City cops who allegedly shook down drug dealers for cash, cocaine, and guns. The gang from the 73rd Precinct in Brownsville, Brooklyn, was reportedly known as the Morgue Boys. That's because they allegedly split their haul in a former casket factory. And a suspect in a murderous New York gang called the Cowboys is in custody tonight. Robert Cherry was arrested in Buffalo today. Police say he is one of 10 men who impersonated cops and pretended to arrest major drug dealers, then hold them for ransom. Several kidnap victims were killed. Three men were convicted in Manhattan federal court today in the kidnapping scheme. Four others already pleaded guilty. Two more are still at large. Is pop star Michael Jackson a patient at a Connecticut hospital? That is a big question tonight. Officials at the exclusive Silver Hill Psychiatric Hospital in New Canaan will not confirm or deny if Jackson is being treated there. But a newspaper report said that the embattled superstar arrived Monday night. Jackson's spokesman vehemently denies the rumor, saying the star is in Europe, being treated for an addiction to painkillers brought on by allegations of sexually abusing a 13-year-old boy. I talked to him. He's in a rehabilitation place. In Europe. in Europe. He called us. California officials say if Jackson is in Connecticut, they will immediately get a warrant for a body search to check the alleged victim's description of the star's private part. Okay. The Swiss nanny who was cleared of killing a baby in an arson fire now faces a civil suit in the case. Olivia Reiner was acquitted of criminal charges in the death of a three-month-old Westchester baby girl. Now the parents have filed a $100 million suit against Reiner and the agency that placed her. The suit says Reiner was negligent and the agency failed to screen her properly. Reiner has gone back home to Switzerland. The agency could not be reached for comment. 
He performed abortions on women who weren't even pregnant, and he won't be getting his medical license back. Justin Tara, a doctor who practiced in Manhattan, lost his bid to regain his license today. Two state medical review boards revoked Tara's license after he performed 24 abortions. Only two of the women were pregnant. He sued, saying there was insufficient evidence. But today, a state appeals court unanimously ruled against him. Maybe it's happened to you when you're driving, you get so frustrated and angry at another driver, you start screaming. Well, police say a lot more than that happened on the Major Deegan Expressway in the Bronx. But as Channel 2's J.J. Gonzalez reports, now a gunman picked on the wrong car. There was a time when minor traffic disputes between drivers met an argument, angry words, and maybe an obscene gesture, then forgotten. But today, it's become a dangerous game. Take the case of two plainclothes police officers in an unmarked car making a left turn onto the Major Deegan from the McCombs Dam Bridge last Tuesday. A BMW pulls up behind them. Beep, beep, it says, you're moving too slow. There are a few words exchanged. Suddenly, the BMW pulls alongside them, pegs two shots at the cops. The cops shoot back. Suddenly, there's a chase downtown. The chase ended at the Triborough Bridge. Four men in the BMW arrested. Fortunately, no one was hurt. Not so in the tragedy that befell Pamela Mascaro last December. The young Long Island mother was killed after her husband got into an argument with another driver turning off the Grand Central Parkway. The man pulled up alongside their Chrysler LeBaron and fired three shots into the vehicle. Pamela was shot in the head, died one day later on Christmas Eve, leaving behind a grieving husband and her three-year-old daughter. Other shootings have left most drivers we spoke with wary of minor traffic disputes. I, I don't argue that much. No, it's not worth it. Why? Uh, you never know. No, nah, never. Why? It's too dangerous these days. Never. Why? Why? Because I don't want someone to stop and pull out a gun and shoot me. <laughs> it seems that the time has passed when any traffic dispute can be considered minor. J.J. Gonzalez, Channel 2 News. Four of New York's finest are hailed as heroes today for braving flames and intense smoke to rescue a trapped little boy. Early this morning, the four Brooklyn police officers came upon a burning house and a frantic mother pleading for help. Her six-year-old son, Michael, was still inside. The four cops rushed into the house in a desperate search for the little boy. The, uh, the whole kitchen was in flames and the smoke was thick. You couldn't even see the front of your hand. So we started doing a room-by-room -room search. I was calling, you know, is, is anybody back here? And that's when, you know, the little boy on the bed peeked his head out from underneath the covers. And I grabbed him and I started screaming that, you know, I got him, I got him. Yeah, the boy Michael and the four officers were treated for smoke inhalation, but they're all okay tonight. Terror on Long Island. Coming up next, details of a carjacking that turned to rape. And house arrest may never have looked so good. Tell you where Hotel Queen Leona Helmsley is serving out her jail sentence. Also, whether the New Jersey legislature will save a dog who's now on death row. Channel 2 News is sponsored by your Tri State Jeep and Eagle dealers. This is the Eagle Vision. Now, some people might be surprised to learn that this is an American sports sedan. But because of its 3.3-liter V6 engine, four-wheel disc brakes, driver and front passenger airbags, Eagle Vision has a lot of people turning in their imports. We're not really surprised by this. We view it as a new kind of foreign trade agreement. See your tri-state Jeep and Eagle dealer. On the next Entertainment Tonight. Forty-seven years after they start in It's a Wonderful Life, the Bailey Kids reunite to share some very special moments. It was a wonderful experience. Plus, get ready for Apache action and adventure as E.T. goes behind the scenes of the TV movie Geronimo. It's part of the history of America, the nation. On the next Entertainment Tonight. Tonight at 7.30 on Channel 2. A salute to the greatest home team ever, the U.S. Olympic team. The Home Depot is proud to sponsor the 1994 Olympic Winter Games and to have Black & Decker as a member of our Home Depot Olympic family. A trusted name, Black & Decker tools have been helping to get the job done and done right for over 80 years. The commitment to being the best, that's the winning spirit of Black & Decker and of Home Depot. Proud sponsor of the U.S. Olympic team and the Olympic Winter Games in Lillehammer, Norway. It is an entirely new class of luxury automobile created to a higher standard. So responsive, its advanced V8 Northstar system makes passing and merging virtually effortless. 
and so spacious it accommodates six passengers in complete comfort. It is a combination of qualities you've never seen before. Yet a single drive will make you wonder why you ever settled for less. Introducing the all-new DeVille Concours by Cadillac, creating a higher standard. Some months wind up being more expensive than others, which is why the Chase credit card is cause for celebration. Months when you have a higher balance, we'll take our already low interest rate and lower it to 13.4. Whatever your needs, Chase has a credit card to meet them. Call 1-800-AT-CHASE. Because sometimes it's better to give and receive. Chase Manhattan. Profit from the experience. Tonight, Long Island police are searching for those responsible for a horrible crime. They say what started as a carjacking turned into a kidnapping and a rape. Channel 2 is live in Baldwin. Here's Long Island correspondent Jennifer McLogan with the latest on the search for the suspects. Jennifer? Dana, detectives working the case here at the first police precinct say they may have some fresh leads in this case tonight, provided by the victim herself. Police add this carjacking may not have been so successful, but the victim's van doors were unlocked. Nassau County police are on the lookout tonight for three men in their early 20s who got away following a daring and terrifying assault on a young Searingtown couple. It began in this East Meadow parking lot and ended near this Uniondale Junior High School. The couple was parked along here in a Plymouth van similar to this one when suddenly the front door opened and a shotgun wielding carjacker was aiming at them, demanding their valuables. They attempted to slide out the passenger side when they saw two more suspects there and realized they were surrounded. One male black entered from the driver's side door and he was armed with a shotgun. Two male blacks entered from the passenger side door, immediately came into the vehicle, directed the, the two people to disrobe. The uh, male, the male white that was in the vehicle, apparently uh, hesitated a little, so they pulled the sweater over his head so he couldn't see them, and pulled his pants around his ankle. They removed his wallet with a credit card and a watch from his wrist, and he was pushed from the van. Two suspects quickly fled on foot with the valuables. Police have confiscated security tapes taken by hidden cameras at a nearby hamburger restaurant and a donut shop hoping they might ID the assailants. In the meantime, the third criminal kidnapped the woman, driving her to the back of a school where he raped and sodomized her. He made his getaway in the stolen van, a 1993 green Plymouth Voyager, New York license number B3505T. Several establishments in the strip mall were open last night when the crime took place, including this laundromat next to where the couple parked. I was shocked. I was shocked. I work in here on Saturday nights, and I've never had any problems. The shaken couple is with police right now going through mug shots and working with an artist trying to develop some composite sketches. The 23-year-old woman continues to receive medical attention and counseling, but tells police right now she's eager to do all she can to try to help them catch the criminals. Channel 2 News is live in Baldwin. I'm Jennifer McLogan. Ernie and Dana? All right, Jennifer. I'll take it back. House arrest is looking a lot better to Leona Helmsley. The 73-year-old hotel queen is serving the remainder of her sentence for tax evasion at her posh home, her penthouse at the Park Lane Hotel in Manhattan. She moved back last Friday after serving a month at a roach-infested halfway house. But since she is still under house arrest, she has to be home by 9 p.m. There is no reprieve today for the so-called death row dog in New Jersey. Taro the Akita will have to stay behind bars at the Bergen County Jail. The dog bit its owner's grandchild a couple of years ago. State law requires that Taro be destroyed, but there's a legal battle that's raged for three years now. Today, state lawmakers voted down a proposal to let Taro live and send him out of state. But one assemblyman says he will introduce a bill on Monday to amend the vicious dog law and save Taro. Next, Storm Field with the weekend forecast. And it is now officially the Christmas season in New York. We're going to bring you the annual lighting of the Rockefeller Center Christmas tree. Also, blast off for what's being called the most important space shuttle mission since men last walked on the moon 21 years ago. It's the Dodge Shadow last call. Our special allotment of extra 94 Dodge Shadows is almost gone. So you've got to hurry. And you can take advantage of a... A Christmas tradition is shining brightly in Midtown Manhattan tonight. A 
lighting of the Rockefeller Center Christmas tree happened less than an hour ago. Thousands of tourists gathered for the annual holiday event, and thousands more certainly will visit in the coming weeks to see one of the brightest symbols of the city's holiday spirit. Looks great. Nice weather for it. Yes, we were lucky it was dry. Remember. What You're trying to remember? It? What is Haven't it been outside? outside I said much that and then I saw. <laughs> no, it was mild yeah, today. It was, it was a little overcast, a little cloudy right. but out, no rain. but it was nice. It was dry. People really did enjoy the day quite a bit. A few breaks of sunshine. If you were lucky to be under one of those, you enjoyed that. Temperatures outside right now, 49 degrees, down one degree in the last hour. Our high today was 51. Normal this time of year is about 47, so we actually got quite lucky with today with a very nice day overall. Humidity, 50%. Winds right now from the southeast at 8 miles an hour. And as you can see, throughout the area, not bad at all. Overnight tonight, temperatures are also going to be staying mild. Currently, we've got a system, low pressure up here, a front line staggering out from it. Rain associated with this is going to be moving up and to the northeast. We've got an onshore flow. The combination of the two, even though it was gray but okay today, tomorrow is going to be uh, a little bit nicer because this system is drying out as it moves to us is just clouds associated with it, so not much in the way of activity. We've got a little nicer weather and then the development of a system that will come our way from the southwest. Uh, what we have on the satellite picture kind of backs this up. Here's the low, there's the frontal line. Notice the development down in here. This is the development that's going to slowly make its way to us, but it's going to take about 36 hours before it gets here. So we've got one more nice day before it gets a little nastier for us. And it looks like most of the shower activity will happen overnight Saturday into Sunday morning before clearing out. Temperatures throughout the next three days, however, and maybe even the next four days, really on the mild side. Remember that the normals this time of year are in the 40s, and we won't be in the 40s until Tuesday. The rest of this uh, four-day period, Friday through Monday, right now staying mild for this time of year although we're trading off for some cloudiness. Some rain. Thank you, Storm. The weather cooperated. The shuttle Endeavour is off on what's been called the most important space mission in decades. And we have liftoff. Liftoff of the Space Shuttle Endeavour on an ambitious mission to service the Hubble Space Telescope. The seven astronauts are scheduled to rendezvous with the Hubble Space Telescope on Saturday and begin an extremely complicated repair mission. The $2 billion telescope was supposed to provide never-before-seen looks at our universe, but it has suffered from blurred vision since it was launched in 1990. And this is the fix-it job. They hope it works. For that price, it better. <laughs> better. Still ahead, wait till you hear what Roseanne and Tom Arnold are up to now. Who could believe it? Also tonight, the bumps along the way to being crowned the king of late night, David Letterman, the early years coming up. For Cora and Sam, a lifetime of love was just not enough. I'll be here always. Can a love that strong, God, please, ever really die? Where'd you come from? See my new friend? I didn't see any dog. My sisters think I'm seeing things. It's the grief. It's making him go crazy. Emmy winner Hume Cronin, Oscar winner Jessica Tandy in a love story unlike any other. There are no real endings in this world. Hallmark Hall of Fame's To Dance with the White Dog, Sunday. Continuous improvement through constant innovation. It's how Cadillac is creating a higher standard with America's favorite luxury sedan, the 1994 Cadillac DeVille. Completely redesigned with more than 100 newly refined features, each created to keep the driving experience as rewarding as possible. And now DeVille's newest innovation, a $469 a month lease for 24 months with 2200 down. See your Cadillac Tri-Statesman. A class action involving individuals occupationally exposed to asbestos is pending in federal court. If you're a class member, your rights may be affected. Class members are all persons exposed occupationally to asbestos, individuals exposed through the occupational exposure of a spouse or household member, family or legal representatives of those exposed. You don't need to be currently sick from asbestos to be a class member. For information, see your Sunday paper or call 1-800-847-2727. There's Tommy's new red truck, Aunt Mabel's new blue dress, and even Grandma's green gelatin. Catch all the colors of the holidays with the Panasonic Palm Quarter Color Viewfinder. Even the green gelatin falling on Aunt Mabel's new dress after she tripped over Tommy's truck. Win a chance to capture your family memories. Send a postcard with your name, age, address, and daytime phone to Panasonic Palm Quarter, Radio City Station, Post Office Box 1306, New York, New York, 10101-1306. The Panasonic Palm Quarter. Its tapes will play in your VHS VCR. 
I can't sit still and watch them crucify my son and not say anything. Finally, Michael's mother. Tonight at 7 on Channel 2. Roseanne and Tom Arnold plan to make it a threesome, and we're not talking about a baby. A spokesperson confirms the comedy couple is marrying another woman, Tom Arnold's longtime assistant, Kim Silver. The couple supposedly even gave her a five-carat diamond engagement ring. It's not clear how they're going to get around the bigamy problem, but if you're looking for a gift, the Arnolds say they're registered at Barney's and Ben and & Jerry's ice cream. He's now the king of late-night television, but the road to success wasn't always smooth for David Letterman, and not everyone appreciated his antics. Channel 2's Carol Martin explains as she continues her special report, Letterman, The Early Years. Long before there was Late Night and The Late Show, David Letterman was honing his comedic teeth in college at Ball State University in Indiana. Our first question for Dave fans. What was David Letterman's first job where he could play to an audience? Stand-up comic, talk show host, disc jockey, or talent show host? DJ. I don't know why. Just a guess. <laughs> I think he was a stand-up comedian. I think he was a DJ because I think I read it in the paper someplace. DJ is right, but it didn't take him long to get into trouble. Why did you fire him? Well, he wouldn't follow the script. Um, you know, when you're playing classical music, there's only one biography for Beethoven or Brahms or Chopin. He'd write his own bios. But he soon returned as a news writer, where he would often sneak in his own wacky news items. And it didn't take long before he got his first shot at TV while still in school. What do you think was Letterman's first TV job? An announcer? A wacky weatherman? A talk show host? Yeah, he was definitely a weatherman. He looks like he's been in some crazy weather. <laughs> he was a wacky weatherman. That was the only job he could get when he was starting out. He had the real long hair. Actually, the correct answer is station announcer. And we've dug through the archives to find just a snippet. But it wasn't long after that that he became the more well-known wacky weekend weatherman. Let me straighten out my high-pressure system up here. Oh, there we go. He would say, you know, 68 in Muncie and 68 in, in Kokomo, and they'll play off that time next weekend. They recognized early on that this weatherman at Channel 13 on weekends was certainly unlike anybody else they were seeing on television, and so the first true cadre or core of Letterman fans began. We all know where that's led now, but does Dave remember his roots? True or false, Letterman still often goes back to his hometown. True, uh, somewhere in Indiana. I know he loves his mom. He lives in Connecticut, in uh, New Canaan. I went there, he wasn't there, some lady answered the door. It's a little white house with a picket fence, so he's never in New Canaan, so it's false. But probably Indiana, I don't know. Truth is, Letterman gets back to Indiana regularly. Oh, damn it, hot. Ooh, look at how hot I am. Sizzling's more like it. By the way, you know, Dave established a special scholarship at Ball State University, which to this day is commemorated by a plaque which reads, To all the C students before and after me. What else? I'm Carol Martin, Channel 2 News. Now for a look at some of the stories we're working on for Channel 2 News at 11. The search for Michael Jackson. There are reports he's in Connecticut. We'll have a live report, plus reaction from his family. Also, New York gets a new top cop, but can William Bratton make our streets safer, really? Those stories and more tonight on Channel 2 News at 11 o'clock. Huh? And up next right here, tunnel trouble. We're going to tell you what caused this morning's nightmare for commuters. And Rock Road has sports live from Madison Square Garden where the Knicks take on the NBA's only undefeated team. We'll be right back. Bad the Good news for commuters today. The Port Authority just put out its proposed budget for 1994. There is no toll increase for the bridges or the tunnels or the path train. But that was small consolation to thousands of drivers this morning. A bomb scare shut down the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel for three hours. In the rush hour, police removed a suspicious-looking package, which fortunately turned out to be just a box of tools hmm. left by a construction worker. Got to check, though. Big showdown tonight at the Garden. The Knicks will try to stop the Houston Rockets from tying a record by going 15-0. and 0. Rock Road is live at the Garden of Rock. What is the plan? How do we stop Hakeem? Defense, defense, and more defense. A big question is, can the Knicks defuse the Rockets' winning streak? Right now, they're at 14. They're one away from tying the NBA record for consecutive winning streak in the beginning of the season. Of course, the Knicks hope to stop them at 14 and use that big defense tonight. Last year, they did right here at the Garden. Let's show you some of the highlights. The Knicks hammered the Rockets. Uh, big game for Patrick Ewing, although he only played 18 points. He had 24 
18 minutes, that is, he had 24 points. Uh, John Starks also on target. Final score in this one last year, 125 to 95. Starks with 23 points. Rockets look to even the score. It's something uh, out of the ordinary in the in the regular season. This is like it almost has a playoff uh, atmosphere and a lot of attention, and uh, it's it's what it's all about. I don't think it's like gonna make or break either team or whatever. I didn't like the seventh game at the second round of the playoff or whatever. You know, it's just another game for both teams. Well, of course, the Knicks have something to prove as well. Uh, you know, they want to make sure they can stop the Rockets, but the Rockets have not given up more than 100 points or 100 points any time this season in their 14 games. Joining me, Ford Anthony Mason. Anthony, obviously that's going to inspire you guys. Who's got the most pressure, you or the Rockets? Well, we're not really concerned with what kind of pressure they have. We're concerned with the fact that it's a team trying to come in Madison Square Garden and not only get a victory, but try to set an NBA record. And, uh, we're not trying to have that here at home. One thing you guys are going to deal with, you haven't played in like a week. I mean, you got to have a little bit of rust going. What, what are you doing during practice to keep you guys sharp? We, we work hard. We scrimmage. We go up and down. We do all kinds of things. So we didn't. Have, we had a few days off before the last game, and we came out and played one of the best games of the season. So that's neither here nor there. It's how you prepare yourself. Obviously, the Rockets have proven they're red hot. How do you stop a scoring machine like Akeem Olajuwon and the rest? Well, I guess you you know make it difficult for them first of all. Or, Get a deep spot in the post, make it diff difficult for the ball to come in so easy because he's such a dangerous player on the post. You just don't give him anything easy. One thing the Knicks obviously have over the Rockets is the deep bench. You guys can go, uh, you know, six, seven, eight deep and still have a lot of firepower. Uh, we've been blessed with a lot of talent on this team. We're very deep, uh, foul trouble. You know, it doesn't become a plague for us because we have so many, you know, different players and so much talent here. So we're really blessed. All right, let me have a prognostication from Anthony Mason for this game tonight. It's going to be really exciting. It's going to be hot. Come here to defend our home court, and that's what we're going to do tonight. You're blow them out like last year? <laughs> no, I don't like to make predictions like right. that, but we're going to get